We are back. All three of us. Yeah. So, um, now all two of us. Yeah. Okay. So GPUs. Yeah. Um, we talked a lot <laughs> yeah, about during the break about how we present this because it's the kind of thing that can go anywhere. Yeah. But see. Yeah, like, uh, like, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, like today's, uh, like some of these, like. Like the array chops are really easy to describe as a uh, as this kind of like a extension of the serial chops. Parallel chops are somewhat easy to describe because it's just like okay, you ask for more resources. But yeah. when it comes to GPUs, it becomes lots more like it becomes com more complicated and complicated because like you you have more and more requirements from the software itself, so that the software itself like supports it. So this mm -hmm. unfortunately can turn into a bit of a talk fest. Uh, so we have examples here, but mm -hmm. like these examples are contingent on, like they depend on, like our system, and so hopefully they they run on other systems as well. And yeah. but so, yeah, unfortunately, it's this kind of like a, like nobody can be told what the matrix is. Matrix is they have to experience experience it for yeah. themselves, kind of a situation. But so for these talk it would be nice if if you have any questions related to gpus just put them uh underneath here in the in the hackmd so that we can then try to respond to them like it's this the same like elephant trying to describe it by like somebody's touching the tail somebody's touching the trunk somebody's touching the leg like it's really hard to describe it uh just like in in total uh, with simple words Mm -hmm. So so okay. What is a what is a GPU? So so there was a question uh, like yesterday or some somebody asked what what's a GPU actually. So uh, so GPU so graphical processing unit. It it like even though it says graphical in the name, uh, it doesn't mean that it's actually doing graphics, especially when it comes to like compute computing stuff. So. Um, in in the clusters and in scientific computing, we often talk about accelerators as well, uh, or general purpose mm -hmm. GPUs, which which just flows out of your mouth. Mouth. <laughs> uh, so uh, GPUs originally were about graphics processing, but at some point somebody realized that okay, like these uh, machines that have been designed to do lots of like vector calculations, because in graphics you usually do like lots of translations, like if you do 3D perspectives, you have to do 3D rotations and stuff like that, you'd have to do a lot of vector calculations. Uh, so they, they could be used also for doing general purpose computing, if your calculations would be vector calculations. So uh, then lots of people realize that, okay, like many physics codes, and especially nowadays, like machine learning and deep learning would, and, and, and differential equations, they could be really easy, like they could be used or solved with using GPUs. And because these GPUs are specialized on these kinds of uh, things, they have like hundreds or thousands of uh, of these calculation cores or these cal like basically calculators that can do these operations in parallel. So they're like highly parallel systems where you basically you give it like a huge bunch of numbers and tell it to like do something with this, like calculate difference of these numbers and it calculates all of these operations, lots of like mat matrix operations and stuff like that. And it can do it very rapidly and it can be used in various fields. But because of still it's it's not generally like central processing units in, in computers, they can do whatever you please you want them to do but these gpu systems are still like they all can only do like certain kinds of operations fast certain kinds of things fast so that's why they often depend on libraries and the, and the system itself to uh to like or the code itself to utilize them properly and and they often depend on on external libraries to to do their stuff correctly so like there's only if the program doesn't support gpus then it doesn't support gpus if it if it does then it does it's it's again this kind of a situation that either it does or it doesn't mm -hmm. and and usually with the gpus no nobody wants to uh like actually code for the gpus like low level code 
So instead they use libraries or libraries that use the other libraries to, to like like abstract, make it more abstract and make it easier to like do stuff. Mm-hmm. And nowadays most of the people actually use like like physics people use let's say Gromax or CP2K or whatever uh, or lumps that has been compiled with the support for GPUs and then they can run on on GPUs or Mumax or, or all, all kinds of different uh, software that that can use GPUs and and for deep learning people or machine learning people they use like these libraries that then uh, utilize the GPUs so you don't have to like worry about it too much. So, uh, but from the side of the Slurm, from the side of the Q system, it's very simple, the GPU. Mm. So if, if Richard, you want to uh, switch to my share. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so, so in general, you what you want to do is you want to specify this GRES or generic resource. Uh, like mm. you want to mm. specify that, okay, I want this, uh, resource to be available and the resource is usually gpu and then you have a colon and and the number of gpus it's usually best to start with one gpu we'll come to that later but uh yeah usually yeah. you just specify that you want you want the gpu and in some clusters you need to specify this some partition like gpu partition because the gpus are like in their own own little world so you need to ask for specifically GPUs from the GPU partition. Uh, in Triton, do not use S running in your batch script because there's a bug. Uh, I think it might be actually solved now, but oh, okay. uh, we'll have to. Uh, yeah, I, I just remembered that we might have already solved this, but we haven't updated the documentation. But okay. in Triton, there might be this kind of a thing. Uh, but le- yeah, let's look at an example. Uh, yeah. So so here's an example what you might want to add uh, to your GPU job. Okay. So you you have the exactly the same script, but you just add GRES GPU one. And like we talk with like CPUs per task option for these multi, multi-process jobs, it's up to the program to actually utilize the GPU. So you basically tell a Slurm that, okay, I want this, I need this, but it's up to you or up to the program to actually utilize the resource. So it doesn't actually like, if you specify the GPU, it doesn't necessarily uh, like mean that the program actually utilizes it. Mm-hmm. In uh, in Triton, there's multiple different GPU types in other clusters there might be as well. And you can like, you can either give a constraint which specifies like this kind of like a I want to use a certain kind of a GPU architecture, uh, or you can give a, a GPU type in the GRES command itself uh, to specify mm-hmm. a certain type mm-hmm. of a GPU. Uh, it depends, like in some other clusters, might be a different constraints, might be different options here, but yeah. but it's good to know because like the GPUs, there's like generational differences. Some of the GPUs uh, do faster in, like yeah. the newer ones are always faster, but sometimes the newer ones are so popular that the older ones would suffice. And um, yeah, mm-hmm. like you you might want to choose yeah. an older one instead of a newer one. And for all of these different arguments, at the bottom of the page, there is a table that says what to use. So basically, the idea is that you have the arguments, but you don't have to memorize them or anything, obviously. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, like in in general, like like you might see words like CUDA or in the previous presentation uh, from CSC, like this, uh, you can see HIP or ROCKM. Those are the AMD versions of CUDA. Uh, so CUDA is this kind of a library that basically like does all of the heavy lifting when you're using NVIDIA's GPUs, which uh, in our case we have NVIDIA's GPUs. Uh, so in those cases, you might need to use CUDA, but usually, like nobody wants to use CUDA, like uh, like wants to use it themselves. They usually want to use something that uses it. <laughs> so it, maybe I say it comp- uh, like complicatedly, but but nobody wants to compile their own CUDA code. If you need to compile your own CUDA code, 
this might be relevant, but in most cases, you just, let's say, if you want to use, let's say, TensorFlow, uh, you create an Conda environment, which brings you the CUDA libraries that that work with the TensorFlow, and then you use those. So maybe we should run this example to see how how to like uh, how okay. to run something in the GPU. I guess as usual, I will type it. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. Examples. Let's configure the screen yeah. well. So this this example okay. is from TensorFlow's tutorials, and it it like you need to load the uh, or download the actual source code because the actual source code is lots a lot longer mm -hmm. than the example there. But it's basically like a okay. like a simple uh, like there's the wget command. Yeah. There. yeah. So, so, so the actual example is is uses uh, it uses TensorFlow and these uh, dense networks to predict this MNIST dataset, which is like the first example that everybody sees when if they do deep mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit complicated to code. Yeah. So, uh, but, okay. And then the but, submission um, you, script, or we run it first yeah. ourselves. So I module yep. load Anaconda into this very shell, and now we do it interactively. Because yeah. that's what so, we do for testing. So S run yeah, testing time, out. one GPU. Yeah. And I guess this runs on any type of GPU we have. Yes, yes. So and Python. So here we have Anaconda. Yeah. Okay. So, so what is important is that we just add the one flag to Jira's GPU, and because the code TensorFlow itself understands about GPUs, it will use GPUs. Mm, so, yeah. So, so you can see here that it's uh, it it says a lots of lots of stuff, but then it uh, also says that well. Uh, yeah, it says there that Tesla K80. So now it was using one of the older GPUs to do that because we didn't specify what we wanted to do. But but this is such a small problem that it's yeah. it's completely fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it ran. So so yeah. The, so yeah. Typically, the problem is is about like the problems are usually installing the software so that it 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 software works and can recognize the GPUs. And and then uh, efficiently using the GPUs, but it's not usually uh, like how do you queue the CPU, GPUs? That's easy. So Richard, if you want to run a Slurm features command, uh, that will show the available GPUs or the available features that uh, at least we have. Okay. In other uh, clusters, I highly recommend checking the documentation where that which are the GPUs. So we have plenty of different GPUs. Here we go. So we have these. Uh, I think it's rather small, but yeah, yeah. Well, we see. It is. So the nodes. I guess this is available, idle, O and T. Yeah, other, other, other and total. Total. Okay. Yeah. Um, but on the on the GRS column, you can see that there's like a GPU. A hundred on some nodes, GPU okay. Tesla K eighty on some. Yeah. Then there's P hundred nodes and V hundred yeah. nodes, so yeah. all like many generations of GPUs are represented. Uh, so if your code needs a specific one, you should uh, specify it via constraint or or with the GREST parameter. Yeah. But uh, but if you don't know what you uh, need, you just I would recommend checking like just leaving yeah. it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the the problem usually with the GPUs is is if the efficient use of them. Like mm -hmm. like we men mm -hmm. I mentioned that GPUs are very powerful for the specific task they do. So they have the, the rest of the tasks that does normal program running has to be done by the CPU part usually. Mm -hmm. So so the GPU part is very fast at what it's doing. So for example, like. Uh, it's very fast at, at doing like this kind of matrix operations, but especially in in like machine learning or deep learning, uh, you usually need to feed the GPU with data, mm -hmm. and usually the problem becomes that the data doesn't come to the GPU fast enough. So what you usually need to do, uh, 
is that you need to uh, well choose a better data format for your data or to have multiple data loaders uh, like multiple processors uh, like you can have mul many of these different requirements for your jobs at the same slurm script mm -hmm. so you can have like a you can ask for multiple CPUs as the same same time you ask for multiple or same time you ask for a GPU, and it's usually recommended to have like something like six data loaders per GPU. So basically, like there will be processes running on the background doing data loading uh, while the GPU is doing the, uh, the the calculation because like. Uh, or doing some output, like doing calculating some other stuff. The CPUs are doing uh, some other stuff while the TP is running because the TP is so fast that you need to keep it fully occupied constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, like uh, you it's, like you won't get the maximum benefit of the system. It's like in our cooking metaphor, your cooks are really fast, but your supply chain can't bring you in the supplies fast enough. And you're basically wasting all these resources while sitting around waiting for trucks to arrive. Yeah, yeah, ba yeah. Ba basically, like you have a pot waiting to be filled with. Uh, you have a really uh, like fast, fast uh, burner, but and you can like cook a lot of spaghetti with it, but but you cannot have enough spaghetti <laughs> to to cook, so it's just like boiling there and doing nothing. So so that's basically the, the situation mm -hmm. so this can be helped with m various different techniques like in the csc talk they also talk about or the, in their workflows they have an example of how to use like uh, containers and squashfs and all kinds of stuff to speed it up there's you can use various data sets and various data loaders to speed it up mm -hmm. but it, it gets very technical like like you already <laughs> probably yeah. Uh, zoned out what I was talking about, and it gets very technical, and it's very dependent on the uh, like the program you're using. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use GPUs, I highly recommend just looking at some program that says GPU in there, like like mm -hmm. if your program can utilize it. And and GPUs are not like they shouldn't be. Um, how could I say it? Like like they are all the rage now, like mm -hmm. nowadays. But it's it's not about what like how you do it. It's about what you do, and and mm -hmm. you can do a lot of uh, research with other tools as well. And it's not like you can use traditional machine learning for many problems. You can do all kinds of like you can use CPUs are not like out of out of the loop any like there are a lot of tools that you can use. GPUs is one tool or one resource for certain kinds of problems. So don't feel like you're left out if you cannot like use GPUs for your problem because like real like science is all about like or ideas and and mm -hmm. like creating models that explain things. And sometimes you need a GPU to explain things. Sometimes you need a GPU for doing like uh, machine learning, but yeah. but in many cases so you don't need it. And and then you shouldn't waste too much time on that. For one of the things you said um, about read the documentation, I guess we can say, like, if you learn enough to use just the GPU and just write the programming, that's not enough. So read more of the things and, like, read about the different data loaders your framework recommends and things like that, because these are important. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, like nowadays, like nobody, like, like I, I told the story that once, once I wanted to. Uh, try coding some games myself. Mm -hmm. And what did I do? I started to learn about how to do uh, OpenGL, like how to draw a triangle with a, mm -hmm. like a, with a, like a, how to compile a C++ code to create like a triangle. And that's mm -hmm. not how, how games work. Like you don't get a game by starting from graphics library and, and trying to like mm -hmm. write your own graphics engine. Of course you can do it, but like it's a waste of effort because like you can find a good graphics engine like Unity mm -hmm. or Unreal or something like free. You can get it for free and then you can just focus on the game making part of the game making. Mm -hmm. And it's a similar kind of a thing where like People nowadays they don't use like when they want to use GPUs. They usually leave the uh, like the GPU coding part mostly yeah. to uh, to to let's say Google or Facebook or somebody who who 
like uses millions of dollars and euros to to like TensorFlow and and Torch and all of these different frameworks, and then they maybe sprinkle some GP their own GPU code on top of it. Like like you can still learn how to use GPUs in the context of a certain framework, for example, and you will still like utilize the gpus but it's it's you don't have to start from the bottom uh in order to learn you know that's really quite representative of a lot of what happens on the cluster so you very rarely do things completely from scratch but you're sort of like finding the best libraries and then doing the next little bit on there and then fortunately in many courses you learn how to make new things but you don't so often learn how to really reuse things or make things reusable. Anyway. Yeah, it's it's always uh, yeah, it's it's it can be a bit disheartening to learn like expect to learn about GPUs, especially uh, like for example in this course, and then be told that read the manual mm -hmm. and look at. But but it's unfortunate reality is that like nobody uses the low level stuff. Uh, or somebody does, but but there's tutorials for all of these different fields, and it, it, like it's highly recommended to look what other people are doing because mm -hmm. that is the fastest way of learning. Because like uh, like it, for example, if you're interested in in uh, in deep learning, just go check w what kind of repositories, let's say DeepMind has created. Mm -hmm. Like they do cutting edge, uh, like <laughs> nice looking. They have a nice blog where you can read about all of these. Uh, models and they provide their code in the in GitHub, so you can check how they have created, the, what tools they use, what kind of things they use to create their like cutting edge technologies, mm -hmm. and and then look at what uh, try to like learn some about those. If you are interested about physics and stuff like that, check how like big physics code like uh, Lamps and CP2K or Gromax or uh, Charm PP or uh, start on plus plus or some other suites how they do their stuff and and use those yeah so it's a good idea to to so, broaden your horizons and look at uh look at yeah. those so what's next um yeah is there much else on this page well i think there were three topics we wanted to cover so gpus aren't magic how to request the gpus how to monitor them should we check the efficiency of the job i just ran yeah, let's see if it okay. even captured it. It was so. Let's see. We can so, check it out. Slurm history. Um, five. Uh, well, ten minutes. Mm, okay, is it twenty minutes? Yeah, this. There we go. So here's the job. So what we're about to show you is special to Alto. So. Yeah, we. Yeah, we are working on getting better document, uh, better monitoring solutions for our users, and hopefully we can share the tools. If we figure out where, good tools to do the monitoring, uh, yeah. we can probably then share them with other universities yeah. and other sites. So, but yeah, sometimes it's hard to like it, it requires a bit of detective work to see the utilization. Unfortunately. Yeah. So we use S account and dash J with the job ID. And then we tell it we want the comment field and let's make it P for Parsifal. So we see here in comment, there's the maximum GPU memory, the power consumed by the GPU in some unit. It requested one CPU, one GPU, and GPU utilization for, does that mean 4% or for what's the unit here? Um, yeah, My it's guess 4%. Is 4%. Okay. Yeah, so it, it didn't like, like, it's such a small pro problem yeah. that it doesn't like even tickle the GPU. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so these GPUs are very powerful, but the, in order to get access to, or get the power, you need mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, like, yeah, you need to actually, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you need to actually, like, Get this. Get some actual stuff to the GPU so yeah. that it it can be fully utilized. Yeah, and again, this is implemented with something that someone here at Alto created that basically watches the GPU as it's running, 
and then records this mm. data and puts it in the comment field. So I don't know what the solutions are at other places. Maybe someone can comment in HackMD about that. But yeah, I guess yeah. we can't say how important it is that you watch this number and you make sure it's being used well. And if you don't get what you want, then ask us. What are the common things that can go wrong with the GPU efficiency that you haven't already mentioned? Uh, I, have we already mentioned them? Like the data coming in too slow, not enough CPU power. Um, yeah, like to... like if you're running if you're running something on your own machine and you have a happen to have like a gaming GPU that is fast, you might you're probably running like on a local uh, SSD. You might have a, like an NVMe SSD on your machine, like this fast solid state drive. And it, when you go to Triton or if you use some like cluster and you don't have an efficient data loader or the data for, data isn't in a cor good format. Uh, you might end up in a situation where the uh, like it, it it seems faster to run on your machine than it runs on the cluster. But the problem is that the data comes from the wrong place. So usually these GPU machines have local disks uh, that you can utilize to store the data set while you're while you're doing analysis. So you usually have to use like local disks, and uh, sometimes you need to uh, sometimes you need to write uh, the data loader in a different way and mm -hmm. like so don't if you if you encounter a situation where like something is it, it is un, like it doesn't seem right like like i expected this to be hell easier or i expected this to work better and then come and ask us and, and ask people like what is mm -hmm. the reason because like it usually just um it usually means that there are uh like yeah, there's some some underlying technical solution, technical thing that is annoying and <laughs> needs to be solved or needs to be like fixed in the code uh, in order to get the maximum performance. Other thing is that also like if you do multi GPU stuff, make certain that your program actually supports it because <laughs> like some yeah. of these physics code can do it quite easily. They can do like um, MPI multi GPU stuff. Yeah, uh, like many of them because the problems are relatively straightforward. They can usually like mm. utilize multiple GPUs, but especially when it comes to like deep learning, you can e easily like make the, make a bad situation worse by like, mm. if you ever have a one, one GPU that is not fully utilized. And if you add another GPU there, that is even less fully utilized, then you can even slow down your mm. code by adding more GPUs to the mix. So, uh, so it's usually a good idea to check, um, check what happens. Yeah. Uh, I highly recommend checking like two frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. They have their own monitoring tools, profiling tools that you can use to see uh, how the code is progressing and what is the GPU utilization. And use, utilizing that kind of tools can easily spot you like if the multi, multi GPU works, if it works or not. Yeah. Okay, so what now? Uh, that was basically the page. There's more examples up above. I think these exercises are maybe too esoteric to be useful, or should we try some? This one idea we had, which is really risky for us, does anyone have a code you would like to try running on a GPU that's publicly available? And we could try to get it running here live and you can see all the things that go wrong with us. We might not even have time to do it, but if someone pays something, we can comment. There's a good question, HackMD. Can you comment on the different types of GPUs? And I think for there, there's two main classifications here. The top parts are the NVIDIA GPUs, and this is an AMD GPU. But beyond that, Simo can tell a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, like the uh, the uh, AMD GPU. So we bought one of these uh, AMD GPUs just so that some of 
our users could port their code to to the upcoming Lumi system or test their stuff on if it's possible to port them into the Lumi system. So like I mentioned about these libraries like CUDA and HIP and the, so such forth, uh, because the underlying machine is completely different, the libraries are also completely different and they come from different companies. So of course they don't want to like standardize the stuff they want their own stuff because their stuff is better so uh so uh they they have a different libraries so yeah like if you you cannot simply port one to other uh but usually you can have like all kinds of like things uh that that can do port in between the gpus you can try it and it, yeah. But it's it gets like really technical really fast. So yeah. so uh, if you're into that kind of stuff, then yeah, like I think there's there's lots of work for you coming in the upcoming mm -hmm. years. But yeah, definitely beyond what this course does. Yeah, and ab about the other like uh, different type of GPUs, like in every GPU generation, they introduce new things. So I think in the Volta generation, the main thing was that they implemented like efficient, uh, efficient uh, double precision, uh, mm -hmm. like computing units. So actually like the performance when it comes to double precision became lots faster. And in, in the Ampere generation, I, I know that they at least implemented some like half precision units. So mm. if this doesn't tell you anything, then don't worry. Yeah. It's very technical, but basically like, like you can, if you put different kinds of numbers into the GPU, they suddenly perform a lot better. And, and there's lots of like this kind of like very technical things that, that uh, like sometimes if you do some technical changes into your code, sometimes it performs a lot, lot better. And usually it's good idea to check like uh, in the framework that you're using, they usually have like best practices. Mm -hmm. and, and if you check those, they usually give like good, good recommended options yeah. to use, good recommended settings. And, and if you just follow what everybody else is doing, then you usually like, get the best results yeah. uh like because this field is like these are so technical things that yeah. uh if you don't uh, if you're not interested in the technical aspect you're interested about using them aspect mm -hmm. it's better to leave the technical like somebody figures out the technical details and then they give you the like the yeah. short version like use these flags and that's that's usually better than yeah. trying to like get all technical yeah. because then can, it's a it's a never ending never ending battle yeah. never ending can, can we thing. summarize also like someone asked here the cuda score practically speaking uh, cuda cores i think uh, the, i core. think the, the uh, cuda okay. core is basically like a compute unit like it's it's basically like if is 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 one calculator that calculates mm -hmm. things so CUDA cores, uh, it's a single calculator that can do many of the other things. So it usually has operations of like do a addition, do a matrix addition, do a vector addition. And some yeah. of these additions, it can do a lot. So let's say like add add two numbers that are 32 bit, it can do it fast. Mm -hmm. But if, it, if you have like, let's say the older generation GPU cards and you tell them to do like uh, do a multiplication of double precision numbers this like 64 bit numbers yeah. then it's suddenly really slow and it's it's because of like how the hardware works and and like yeah, yeah it's it's gets very technical pretty quick but this CUDA calls basically how many processors there are and usually nowadays it's like 4000 in the newest ones or like around 4000 or 3000 4000 in the older ones it might have been like 1000 2000 uh, something like that yeah I wanted to, to like my summary of one of the the previous question Seema answered. So what do the differences of the GPUs? Practically speaking, there might be a code you have that needs a newer GPU. And newer tends to be able to do more stuff at once, so can be faster. But in effect, newer might have features yeah, like that a, a code needs. So yeah. Yeah. Like, but again, like we we should think about like when we talked about uh, uh, like the GPUs, like 
like what we talk about the array jobs that like faster doesn't necessarily make it uh more like it doesn't give you more like like because like if you if you use the most recent ones they are the most sought after so you might want like somebody else wants to use them as well so you might wait on, until you get access to them and and at the same time you could have been using some older one that nobody wants to use and you could have like mm-hmm. gone to the bank with your research and, and like it's usually best idea to think about like okay what is the end goal of my thing is it is my end goal to do this like 10 percent faster or is my 10 percent mm. uh, my end goal to do it <laughs> and it's like mm. okay if you just want to do it then it's usually best to like just yeah. use the resources that are most readily al- available and that's yeah. why the uh, embarrassingly parallel is the, usually the best way to do stuff because like you get most stuff done and mm. uh, mm-hmm. instead of like mm-hmm trying to optimize how to do like yeah and you can use anything like you can even use the smaller stuff more yeah 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 you generalize uh of course in some cases the the most recent ones are the only thing that works because like like i mentioned these technical reasons like like some older uh, things don't necessarily even work like they're not supported anymore by the frameworks uh so yeah and then in those cases you don't uh, anymore want to use those but in many cases like like what is available is better than something that is uh some that is faster in theory <laughs> yeah there's several more interesting questions down here um yeah Actually, can we answer? Can you answer first? How powerful are the Triton GPUs, like A100, compared to consumer GPUs? Uh, yeah. So, so I think like uh, I'll have to double check. But if I, uh, I think the like the most powerful comp, uh, consumer GPU is the 3090 uh, RTX 3090 Ti, and I think that's like a that's basically like an a hundred that's been reduced or something like that so if i uh so so mm. basically like the the most newest yeah it's 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 a yeah it's it's basically like the a hundred is like uh is something like uh like the most powerful gpu you can oh it's yeah it might be a bit bit less i don't know i'm i'm not completely certain which uh, like about but it's it's on the same ballpark but the main thing is usually that like the uh, like the difference between these uh like these uh, gaming gpus and these uh these machine learning gpus is usually like or these compute gpus is this kind of like technical stuff inside them like like in in gaming you don't care about double precision usually because like you don't if some pixel is like one one pixel off you're not you don't worry about it because it's like it's some gaming like it's you're playing some uh, some game and you don't care if there's like an error somewhere or an error that can propagate but in when it comes to like um uh and at the same time you like you don't care about high precision when you're doing gaming and also you don't usually care about like low precision because that would like mess up all of the graphics so usually you don't have these kinds of like they leave when they create these gpus they leave some of these like compute units uh, they they have different kinds of compute units for these kinds of cases so so basically like the the <laughs> graphics unit graphical uh GPUs that you buy from a store are designed for gaming, and the GPUs that you buy from from vendors for this uh, scientific calculation, they are designed for scientific calculation. So you can do like high precision physics simulations that you don't have want to have mistakes in them because the mistakes can propagate, or you can have like uh, these kinds of like low precision stuff that you can use in deep learning to make faster and bigger models. And they usually have lots of more memory, so like eighty gigabytes of memory, and and like there's there's lots of technical reasons, but it's like like there's a difference. Like if you go to like a like a hardware store to buy like a drill or something, you usually like 
you 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 have consumer products there uh and and when the professionals go to like their own store they have like on like professional products and those are like different kinds of things that like they use different tools they don't use the motonet tools or uh, like they don't go to the uh, call city market or like some some neighborhood uh, store to buy their tools they go to a, a actual hardware store yeah and there's yeah the error correcting memory is also one thing like it doesn't matter if if the computer crashes like uh like when you're gaming like you just reboot the computer and log back again but if you're uh, like you've been training for many days and, and your 800 or something crashes that's a that's a bad thing yeah mm -hmm. what else there's a good question there's also quite oh. go ahead yeah yeah about the reproducibility so uh yeah usually like uh machine learning stuff and that kind of stuff <laughs> the reproducibility is all, always a question like i don't know if there it's even like there's uh, there's lots of talk about this is this even possible because like like there's usually randomness that is designed to be in the system but um yeah like usually if, when it comes to reproducibility having good documentation is paramount like like how did you what software did you use what kind of environment do you use uh, what kind of uh, what kind of GPU you used? Uh, what data did you use? And what when you did use the data? Did you load it in different order? Mm -hmm. Did you what were the randomness of the system and stuff like that? Yeah. Okay. I guess we're basically in Q and A mode now, yeah. so we'll yeah. stick around until questions stop coming. Please give us mm. feedback for the course. Um... I'll quickly mention still about GPUs. Like there is like in the first day I uh, presented the Conda environment like documentation. If you're planning on using these Python packages or this stuff that requires this GPU capability, I highly recommend you check that documentation. Yeah on on how to install this because like it's it's something that like there's no simple answer and it's like everybody hits their head head on that problem so that's why we've been we've uh rewritten our documentation because like we we have a lot of a lot of people encounter the same problems with those so uh i highly recommend checking that documentation if you're planning on using let's say tensorflow PyTorch, or whatever that requires the GPUs because like the libraries and, and making everything working together is, is really complicated usually. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Richard.